is going to be on King's Row, so C9 probably not tilting too much towards control maps. I will double check on the draft here, but I'd guess that they probably got rid of Nepal, Li Zhang, and company. Yeah, they, they, they yeah. did. Uh, and, you know, that's probably kind of good for Rise because Rise mm -hmm. likes playing on King's Row. Cl uh, King's Row used to be one of the first auto bans in Cloud9 for mm -hmm. a very long time. So I think Rise kind of maybe forced them into banning out these King of the Hills along with Cloud9's performance today, and they get a pretty good draft. And they even get Rat66 as one of the maps which they won against Cloud9 just a few days ago. Well, I mean, this Rise team, just to kind of put a number on it for the people who enjoy numbers and statistics, they've lost two maps in their last 10 sets. So they, they've, they've 2 0 Tempo twice. They 2 0 Cloud9 in the MSI qualifiers. One of the maps they lost was against Liquid. That was 2 1. Then they beat a lot of the kind of the mid tier NA team, Cyberwolves, uh, Velociraptor Gaming, Huckleberry, and 1%. They 2 uh, 2 0 everyone except 1%. They lost a map to. And then they 2 1 Kingdom, who just beat this Cloud9 team. So. Rise Nation really living up to the name of just continuing to rise, continuing to impress. I'd have to say, given the results that we just saw on King's Row, especially from Rise, you'd have to give them the edge against a Cloud9 team that just lost a kingdom. I, I will no. comment that I think that, before you go ahead and cast, that I do kind of <laughs> like this Zen at a combo that Cloud9 has been running and experimented with. They made it work. On Nibani, I thought really well. We have to see how much of that was due to Tempo Storm. Didn't go so much with King of the Hill, but Lucio's kind of standard there. And I actually think it ha could have some very good viability moving forward in the next few weeks. Definitely agree. And take a look here at the full roster. We're taking a look at the defense coming up from Rise. We'll be running x Retsy. Three before it's all said and done. And Rise Nation, again, uh, aggressive defense coming out. They are able to buy a decent amount of time there. But the problem is they lost so many people that it's still going to be C9 getting extra push on the cart before Rise can contest it once more. Well, for the moment, payload moving backwards, yeah. though. So a pretty decent uh, hold. I will say the Cloud9 is in the the driver's seat here, uh, so to speak, as they do have the ultimate advantage of though a mile away from a Graviton. Spirit once more gets the back, takes down two early on. C9 already fighting off the back foot. Not a whole lot of tools to turn it back in their favor. And they wisely retreat right out of that. And Spirit, very, very good at just finding great positioning on his Reaper, able to take out one or two people early on, and it works out well. It's very reminiscent of what you see Buds do on Fnatic uh, time and time again for when Fnatic plays. Fnatic, of course, uh, not in the tournament here today. Uh, 
some things going on with them. Uh, we'll see next time we see them play, but it, it's a good look for Ryze when you can start comparing people to some of the very best players on Fnatic. What I like about Spirit is his consistency. He's not Feast or Famine on Reaper like so many people are. He's always alive, always getting kills, doesn't play super aggro, but always capitalizes on small mistakes the other team makes. Well, we have a nano boosted Kai Kai. Kyle himself moving in there, does pick off one. Mendo with an almost blind hook. Gets an extra hook hit kill going in there. Midnight Falls. X Redsy trying to turn it back in He's his favor. No! It's three kills here for X Redsy. And now in a perfect position here for McCree cleanup. So it was looking good for C9, but the power of a McCree that's landing his shots, able to reverse momentum like that and just keep it rolling forward cannot be underestimated. And as a result, Ryze will be pushing C9 back once more. C9 still working with a lot of time here, but not necessarily that much in the way of ultimate. Spirit could very well end them with a well-timed Death Blossom here in just a moment. He's looking for it, Hex. Speed boost could be in in just a moment, just creeping here at the corner. C9 has to be very careful not to let Spirit have his way with them. Ah, he does get in, gets the bubble and the orb to get in the back line. Forces out a transcendence at the very least from Wolf and Adam and Mando do combine for a couple kills. They are going to force out a transcend of their own as Locke trying to keep the two remaining members of Rise Nation alive with him. But there goes Locke. This should be C9's fight. And one thing I was going to lead in there is that Adam did have the ability to just stop, or not Adam, but they did. Rulf had the ability to stop that with the on point transcendence. The timing is very, very tight to stop a death blossom from killing people just because of how quick it is. But Rulf saw the Reaper coming in, activated the transcendence at the perfect time, kept his team alive, didn't let Spirit get what he was looking for. And as a result, C9 now with almost four minutes to go from second to last. And they're saying a pretty good time here, Hex. Yeah, one of my favorite things in all of Overwatch is now on the field, and that's Mendo playing Tracer. It just goes back to, reminds me of the good old days of closed beta, where Mendo's Tracer was the bane of team's existence. But here comes an auto boosted Genji on Thorcorn. He gets knocked to the ground and discorded. Surefor got two right away, ended up kissing the dirt right after, but the damage was done. C9 able to keep the momentum moving forward. They take down Midnight, and now it is Rise Nation on the back foot. x Retzi will have Deadeye here, but this is never a position you want to be on the defense here, where you're staggering, you have to come back out in a flash. x Retzi looking for those happy little skulls, still manages to get two off. So C9 important. possibly being way too over aggro there, and now Rise Nation coming in with the punish. They pick off three. And I don't know, I just feel like a raw dead eye shouldn't be getting that much value in that situation. C9 the, felt a little bit overextended. The two kills that they that he got were on Kai Kai and Mendo, who were setting him up for the gra the, the Big Bang combination. They had him Graviton. Mendo was rolling in to throw in that pulse bomb when he got dead eyed on his way in. That was enormously clutch from that. He saved his entire team. Everyone who's in that Graviton was going to die if that dead eye does not connect with the tracer at the last second. Have to see. Here comes the Earth Shatter coming in from the offense. Doesn't quite get what they're looking for. x Retsy firing right back. Sound Bear out here for the defense. They're up one to start things off. Winston just getting peppered with shots in the back. And Kai Kai going the fall as a result. It's three quick kills here from Rise and Rise. Once more, finding their footing. Able to give it right back to C9. And C9, they're going to have to try and get out of this with their lives. Sure, for stuck in a really awkward position. Is able to get out. We'll have Dragon Blade for the next fight, so I think we're going to be seeing here, Hex, is Nano Boost in the Dragon Blade and really putting the game in Shurfor's hands. That's probably their their best bet here, Adam and Shurfor combining. That's the only alts on the field. And there it is. It comes right out. Takes down Faz, looking for more. You can get stymied a bit by that Transcendent. Still is able to find two before it's all said and done, but it's not as clean as C9 needed as Shurfor ends up dying in the end, and it's a yet another hold from Rise with two very key ultimates burned here for C9. Well, their back is against the wall now as they only have about 80 seconds here to close out this map. They've gotten good progress on it, but now it does seem that they're scrambling a little bit. What do you think of this May pick coming out from Shorefort? I mean, we've seen Shurfor on May quite a bit. I don't know if I like it in this situation as the we have to make plays happen right now pick, but I think for them, what they're hoping for is that Shurfor is going to get the wall freeze out, set up one person, that'll be the pick they need. I don't know if it's exactly the play here, though. I'm not super sold on it, but for C9, it is do or die. This is one of their very last pushes coming out. And Spirit, though, now on the Genji, able to get to the back line, takes out Mendo. And with no Mendo, there's no McCree muscle as the fight breaks down here. X-Rise once more in a good position. And here comes the Dragon Blade. Oh, no, <laughs> Rip! The hammer swing takes down three. And just as it was looking good, it's starting to look way worse. C9, 35 seconds left in a great position now to finish this out. There's no reason any of that should happen. 
Rip was just swinging wildly as he was swarmed by all the DPS of the other team, able to somehow connect with about three of them. Here comes an enormous earth shatter late from Rib as he puts the team on his Reinhardt shoulders. There goes the sound barrier for the defense as they try to stall this out. They looks like they should be able to, but a couple late kills as Mendo rejoins the fight. Mendo's rejoin the fight. Wolf is marking them. Mendo knocking them down. This is a terrible position to be in on the defense. They just, they're trying to stall things out and look for the miracle here. At the very least, draw enough time to zero. Now you might go, well, was drawing out the zero matter? It matters a lot for how time bank is handled towards mm -hmm. the very end. Now, this can get a little bit complicated, but to explain it in full, those last few seconds of delay, it matters for this following reason. If Rise is able to finish out this map, and do it with over a minute remaining, as in not one minute, not 59 seconds, but 101 left on the clock. If they're able to, I think one minute actually might qualify for this as well. Then yep. C9 does not get a free minute. They do not get any chance to attack. And it's a free attack for Rise to try and cap the point and finish out the map. But if Rise does not get finish out the map with at least a minute buffer, then both teams will have at least a minute and go from there. So the fact that they're able to hold to 0-0 zero, zero could come back and be a big boon here for Rise, depending on how their attack ends up going down. Well, defensively, Shorefor is going to stay on the May that he busted out towards the end on the offense, which has been a staple of defensive King's Row for, uh, you know, probably three weeks now, something along those lines, just completely walling off, forcing the offensive team up over the top. But you mentioned towards the end of that fight that it was Wolf marking people and Mendo cleaning them up on McCree. It's one of the combinations that I think maybe does not get as much recognition as it should. As we, we've talked about support and DPS combinations right now, it's Ana and Reaper go hand in hand. Of course, Farrah and Mercy, the original. And earlier in that fight, actually, it was Locke and Retzi cleaning up on that cart in Streets phase, too. So if you can Discord and have a McCree follow that up, that is another great combination of your support and DPS working well together. This ride Nation team, a wonderful example of how well it works together as Locke and Retzi have been doing it for a while as they've been hesitant to move over to the Ana meta and they've been doing it great. You saw Rolf and Mendo do it too. So when a Zen is alive and you get discorded, the, the last sound in the world you want to hear is a peacemaker going off somewhere. Absolutely. And something to note here too, as far as how the, all of this is going down is that you take a look at Rise. Rise is not in a good shape to start out that game. Uh, C9 had them on the ropes, but a mark of a really good team is that you're able to come back from those situations, re-solidify, and bring it back to the other side. And Ryze is able to do that, which does not bode super nice well for wall. C9 nice if Ryze can start out here with a strong opening. Good wall from Sheer 4 to s sort of block things out in the beginning, but overall, Ryze still holding strong. They're able to deal with the poke, and now they're muscling in on C9's territory. Yeah, C9 force back through the hotel. Mendo's going to go for this hook. He does hit it, but a beautiful shield out of Midnight to save Desro from taking all of that damage. Uh, keeps his whole team alive. Still kind of back and forth. Another hook is hit, and they do sleep dart and eliminate Midnight with the help of Wolf. Midnight is down. Next, Retzi, though, trading back, taking down Rib. And remember, the offense trades out better here than the defense. So C9, they can't lose anyone else. If they don't lose anyone else here, they should be able to recover in full. And it's looking like they're going to do just that. The remaining members of Rise just backing out. X-Retzi, McCree, really, really vulnerable in situations like that. He's not careful, but Kai Kai overextends, and here comes Rise. Now the potential advantage. Midnight gets frozen here on the point. They do finish him up too as Shore 4 comes out of his ice block to take him down. I will say though that Wolf, you expect your Zenyatta to be able to Discord in Harmony well. His DPS adds so much to the scene. It does, but he sliced right down. Spirit gets the back line, but Mendo, the immediate punish there. Dragon Blade not getting as much as he wants, and here comes Mendo going right to the back, looking for more, looking for those key hooks. Not able to hit X Retzi as he's sitting there on the ground and ends up paying the price instead. Not the flank Mendo is looking for as Rise starts to turn things in their favor. Lake Rotan coming out from Kai Kai. Don't know if it's going to be enough, especially as respawn start coming in here, Axe. Uh, late Blizzard's going to come in in desperation, too. Does freeze Midnight, which is not going to be making him happy as he's been frozen a couple times this game. But it's enough for them to grab this point and continue moving forward. Now, as we move forward, there are a, a couple switch-ups on the defense. Kaikai's on a defensive Winston at the moment. Rolf is the only one with his ultimate up of Mendo. Will soon have his whole hog up as well. Offensively, Graviton and Deadeye could be a combination they try to hit, although I I'm not sure that this phase of the map is the best spot for Deadeye, but Graviton, always good. 
Graviton has so many follow-ups, including the Zarya herself under the right circumstances. It is an incredibly versatile ultimate that can be comboed well, but doesn't always need a combo. And here comes Midnight. He's going to open up here with the Graviton. Pulls in four to start things out. x Retsy though, falling early. That big gun of damage is down, and this Graviton not going to be as successful as Rise would like, as sure for now in his trademark McCree, able to blame the poke damage. Force rise back, but this is always tricky here for a defense where you don't really want to go too far aggro just because of how quickly the respawns do come in. Rolf, though, not to be contained, takes out Faz just for good measure before backing out. The defense right now could actually hold all the way up at the arch if they wanted to, mostly because they've got Kai Kai up here on the high ground, knowing that there's no one's going to be coming up through there. Uh, just as I say that, they do send the Reaper up over top there, but you don't really have to worry about flanks holding this far forward. No, uh, that is the one upside when you hold for it. As you mentioned, you take away the flank game just a little bit. But here we go. Nana Boost is coming out here from the defense. Kai Kai moving in deep. Gets two before falling himself. And Rib just uh, swinging the hammer here in the card. And C9, they're going to trade out effectively to still keep Rise Nation back. And I don't know if Rise is super, super prepared for this aggressive defense coming out from C9. But for now, it's high risk, high reward. But C9 cashing in on the reward part of it as... Take a look, the offensive rise is going to have to regroup once more. They will have Sound Barrier here, though, which should give them pretty good breathing room against C9. And C9, I think they know it. They're backing up just a bit. Yeah, they want to be in better position to disengage, too. It's better to have a straight shot back into this open area than try to wind through the streets if you get aggressed upon. So that's why they're giving up that about 30 meters of progress. Sunberry does come in here from Rise. They don't have any kills on it just yet. They do get Kai Kai, who's a little bit far up. Let's check comes in for him, not getting anything that he wants. And now the ult game firmly going in favor of Rise. They're up a player, their ult ultimates. Spirit holding on to Death Blossom should be going in here in just a moment, just working his way to the back. And Desiree goes down, but here comes the Graviton. Spirit moving in. Doesn't like the look of the Transcendence, gonna hold on to it just for now, but opportunity should be coming up here in just a moment as Rise continues to put on the pressure. They are getting some nice kills here. It's been just what really the, scrappy. What is up with Rib? I have no idea. What? Wow. <laughs> Why? Either way, the distraction of the Reinhardt far deep still working out. Mendo coming up the whole hog, and they're going to push Rise back and a push that up until the very end was working out pretty okay for the side of Rise. So a little bit unfortunate for Rise now down to a minute 45. Two pushes left for them to take second, and C9... They're going to have to do this next fight on grit and glory alone. Not much in the way of alts, but if they're able to take this fight with no alt techs, it could be huge. It could be the map. Well, they need to start getting some value out of their tank ultimates. There's been a couple Gravitons that have yielded very few results, as well as some Earth Shatters that have hit absolutely nothing. And that has been how they've liked to initiate fights. And without that initiation, they've really struggled. Right now, they are going to have Graviton up. We'll see if they finally make one work. Earthshot oh. comes in from Rib, knocks down at least three. This is what we saw from Rib at E-League, and he's not stopping now. Doesn't get as much follow-up as he wants and falling himself, but creates enough of an opening for Share 4 to take that next Red Sea, and this should be a fight cleaned up here by Sinai Share 4 going in for the scraps. Yeah, they're going to try to just suicide here, try to get as much as they can and go for their next fight. That is going to be the last fight of this stage one way or the other. This time, though, I mean, I guess you could consider that a junk rush, except for Desro, who did try to get an Earth Shatter somewhere in there. His Earth Shatters have not been good this uh, side of the map, but they are gonna. They did hold on to the grab. They held on to everything else. Can they work a miracle? Last fight incoming with only 30 seconds left. We're going to have to see. This is the last attempt here for Rising on to make this work. They do have Graviton into Death Blossom. You can see if Spirit can make most of it. Spirit having to expose himself pretty early here, but here's the Graviton Spirit working his way to the back. Ends up getting hooked by Mendo. Finds a rough spot. Sound Bear is down, but sure for Dead Eye or the top takes him down. But it is a McCree Fest right now. X Retzi turning on the fire in the opposite end. C9 struggling to hang on here, but the momentum is definitely against them. They're down sure for already. But Mendo looking to be the hero. Whole hog out. Takes down Mock. Looking for more. And X Retzi finding himself without teammates in a hurry. And it's going to be C9. The hold at the very end of what was a very close team fight. And they take map one right away from Rise. So if. Rise is to beat C9 here. They're going to have to do it on the next two maps. The C9 coming out and taking King's Row right away from them. Mendo brought that back, and he was, by all rights, 
dead. He was discorded and sitting there taking a breather. For some reason, the focus fire did not come through on him, allowed him to get that whole hog off, which started turning the tide. I don't think this is going to be play of the game, but it was play of that stage for sure. It is. Yeah, he's sitting it is, there with the, the very end. This is where C9 was losing this fight. Yeah. And suddenly, whole hog comes in, gets the cleanup, stops x from killing everyone in the back. And it works out. So whole hog, it's a not an ultimate you always look to for the crazy game changing plays. But if the positions are right and everything else falls into place, it can be the game changer you're looking for. And Mendo saw the opportunity and capitalized. He also hit nearly every hook he tried uh, that game. And it wasn't always on the ideal targets. But if you're not getting presented with DPS and supports as you likely won't at higher levels of play, go ahead and hook those tanks. He hooked midnight.